Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Ani coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in Six Rivers National Forest near Willow Creek, California. And it's a rainy day by the river. Just kind of cloudy, overcast, cooled down a lot, which is nice. It was 90 degrees last week. So um, the break in the temperature is nice. Uh, however, Oz goes crazy when he uh, when it's raining outside, he gets very claustrophobic, which means I have these thunder paws just burm, burm, back and forth, back and forth throughout the... Oh. I had to take him out this morning. He was bouncing off the walls, truly bouncing off the walls. And usually we can wake up, he'll have his breakfast, and then he'll go and take another nap. Not today. Nope. So we had to go play fetch for about a half hour and get that extra energy worked out. Holy schmoly. Anyways, I'm talking about my dog again. He's doing great. My little pug. We're talking about gesso today. It took me a full minute to get into that. It is gesso. Gesso. Um, so we will be using gesso over our, uh, we can use gesso over our base layer, right? That's one of the things. Remember we talked about just using ephemera and Mod Podge as a base. Today we're talking about um, gesso as a base. Now I have to admit, I had a pretty limited um, perspective on gesso. Now I've always used it, you know, in my fine art for priming canvases, um, but here is clear gesso over citrusol. I mean, look at those pages. Super, super excited about this. So first off, we're going to have a, a quick discussion about gesso, what it is, what it does, why it's here, um, and some basic uses for it. Then we will go through and we will um, review some of the projects that I've made with it. Uh, I mean, this is the drop cloth, guys. Seriously, it's beautiful. You know, I had a blast. I spent all day with gesso. And then we're also going to go through at the very end and we're gonna look at the difference between um, gesso and non-gessoed. This is with clear gesso. And uh, we're really going to study the differences and why we use it. Okay, first off, we're gonna have our little history lesson, our little what it is and what it's about, and then we'll get down to the table. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Thanks so much. Please hit that like and subscribe and please let me know if there's anything that you want me to do some research on and I will give you some details. All right. Mwah. Thanks. Bye. You can't take me anywhere. I already got paint on my brand new sweatshirt that I got in Florence. My warthog riding a bicycle. It now has paint on it. Gesso. Gesso. Gesso is here to protect and serve. Now, initially I was gonna do this video mixed in with a uh, with paint, but Gesso actually is a really a cool product and it needs to have its own little spiel, little talk about Gesso because um, A, I'm really excited to try some of the suggestions that they were, uh, that I found on the internet, different things you can do with Gesso and um, B, it's a, it's a cool thing. It's a good thing. And it is something that you should have as a tool. Um, it is a necessary tool in your toolbox, right? Gesso to protect and serve. And it does, it protects your surface. Okay, so it's creating a sealant um, on any surface that you use it with. So it will allow you to take something even like a vinyl record. You put a couple layers of gesso on it and you will be able to paint on that gesso. It changes your surface. It creates tooth. Now, what do I mean by tooth? Tooth is, uh, Think of sandpaper, right? A very smooth sandpaper has a low tooth. A very uh, rough has a heavy tooth. So the heavy tooth will grab that medium better, right? So we want our mediums to stick to our canvases, to our books, to whatever we're working on. So it is a layer of protectant. It will reduce absorbency and it will um, create a really nice surface to work on. Now, fine artists, what they would do is they would take their canvas and they would prime it with gesso. So uh, you put a layer of gesso on and then you would sand it down super fine. Then you put another layer of gesso on and you'd sand it down super fine. You put another layer of gesso on. You do it at least three times. Now I've had to do this for art school and it stinks. You know, we had to use it on wood panels or things like that. So that super fine, um, very smooth surface there are times where it is very, very useful to have in your art, but for our needs, we don't need to do that, thankfully, thankfully. 
But what we can do with gesso is we can create texture and we can create all sorts of cool patterns and we will be talking about those here in a little bit. Um, so we'll get to that. Uh, first off, what is gesso? Well, gesso used to be gesso used to be rabbit skin glue with gypsum or chalk. So it used to uh, be in adhesive, basically. Um, today's gesso is a little bit different. Today's gesso was invented in the 50s by Liquitex, and hopefully the place that I got this information from was correct. Somewhere on the internet they said the first acrylic gesso was uh, invented in the 50s by Liquitex. Now, acrylic gesso is cool because it dries faster, uh, it gives us that same smooth surface, it provides flexibility, it provides the protection. Um, so Acrylic gesso uses a polymer latex mixed with chalk and white pigment, usually titanium dioxide, which is known as titanium white, so it improves flexibility. And there's other chemicals, of course, to uh, give it longevity. Now, gesso is very similar to white acrylic paint. It's only thinner. It dries hard, making the surface stiffer. Gesso prepares or primes the surface for painting, making the surface slightly textured and ready to accept mediums. Without gesso, the paint would soak into the weave of the canvas, absorb into the paper, or not stick to the item. Now, you should know that there are two different grades of gesso. There is artist grade and student grade. And the difference uh, between the two is the, um, the ratios of pigment versus filler. Okay, so titanium white is more expensive than chalk. Pigment versus filler, right? The chalk is the filler. Um, the student grade is cheaper because it has more filler than the artist grade. Uh, the artist grade has more pigment, making it thicker and opaquer. Okay, so it will um, cover up better, right? Opaque means it is not transparent. It is not see-through. Two opposite words. Okay, um, the texture and consistency will vary from brand to brand. Some are more liquid, some are thicker, some apply more smoothly. Um, all those things you just have to experiment and see which ones you like best. Um, and how can you tell if something lacks tooth or absorbency um, if you paint your acrylics onto it and the paint either kind of mm, molts to the surface uh, or if it sinks right into the weave of the canvas and it's a good idea to give it a coat or two of gesso. So gesso um, creates a nice smooth surface to play with. That's cool stuff. Now I buy white gesso in a big tub. This is student grade. I, used to, I don't need a fine grade gesso. I just don't. Even with my fine art, I don't need it. Okay. I put it into little tubs, or you can also put it into little squirty bottles for ease of spreading it around. All right. Um, there is also black gesso. Can you make black gesso out of white gesso? Well, you can tint your white gesso very easily by using your acrylic paint on it, uh, in it, mixing it up, making it a color, but will you ever make white into black? Can you take white and make black? You have to use a whole lot of black paint to make something that's white, pure white, into a pure black. Now, with a clear gesso, could you take clear gesso and add black pigment to it to make black gesso? Most likely that would work. I would think it would probably work pretty well. I haven't worked with clear gesso, and so I'm excited to get started with that. Now, this was supposed to be the thick gesso. It doesn't sound very thick to me, kind of annoyed with that. Um, so I will be taking this off of my product recommendation list and uh, I will most likely be adding some talcum powder to that gesso to make it a little bit thicker. Can you make your own gesso? Absolutely. It's essentially the same um, mixture as what we use our texture paste. So it has talcum powder, glue, and white paint. And talcum powder you can substitute like probably um, marble dust or something along that line too. So uh, there's recipes on the internet. Um, and so what is the difference between gesso and gel medium? So gesso creates the tooth so that we can easily, you know, apply more things to it, right? Gel medium and Mod Podge both kind of make a slicker surface as we saw last week. So with that slicker surface, it's much harder to get your mediums to stick onto it. So there is your gesso overview to protect and serve. Um, what other tools do we need with gesso? Well, I've made some substrates. 
I have um, my silicone brushes. Now this is a brand new one. I'm so stoked to try it. Um, it's going to make a really nice sharp edge. We'll get into corners. We'll be able to do really cool things with this. This is a um, like a squeegee type thing. You can get really great coverage with it. We will be using our Princeton synthetic brush. We will be using our uh, palette knives. We will be you now. It, it you can use stuff like a key card or just a regular playing card. Absolutely, you do not have to have the fancy silicone brushes. They are just really nice tools to have. And once you have them, you'll want to keep using them. They're pretty cool. So I think that's about it, guys. We'll uh, get down to the table and start working on. All right, we'll chat soon. Bye. Another question that you might be having is, can you use gesso as white paint? So from what we just talked about, we know that gesso is made up of chalk, pigment, and polymers. Now we also know that acrylic paint is made up of pigment and polymers. The difference is the chalk, is the filler. So what does chalk do? Well, it's going to make a more matte surface, right? It's going to create kind of a toothier, uh, it is not the same as just pure acrylic paint. So in respect to something like this, it worked out beautifully because I wanted kind of an antique finish to it, right? So this, where the white is, that's actually gesso. I wanted that antique look to it, so there it worked fine. Um, this is painted with a chalk paint, right? It could essentially be like a gesso, absolutely. Uh, if you want pure color, like these guys back here, pure color, use white paint, not gesso. Okay. Okay, so one other thing that we're going to use in this project is my texture box. This is my box of texture. So um, it has things like this and this and my bubble wrap and my cardboard and um, different types of bubble wrap, some grid stuff. These make really cool textures. It's a plate that I got at the dollar store. Uh, this is um, a little platter that I got from the dollar store that I tore up. Uh, you know, I have a full thing of texture. Contact paper. Uh, this was uh, metal lace stuff. So having a texture box is pretty cool and I'm excited to play with this. Again, I use this a lot with my jelly press plate, but I keep my texture box around. People look at it as like, oh my God, that it's a huge pile of junk. Yes, yes it is. <laughs>
All right, all I did to create that was put a big thick glob of this on each page, fold them together, and then pull them apart. Pretty easy. It is not rocket science. Don't make something more out of it than what it is. However, I do, since I just put Mod Podge down on those pages, I want to flatten it out for sure first and then pull it back apart. Doo, doo, doo. So now this gives us a really cool mirrored image on both sides and uh, that will be a really cool pattern. So we're going to set that aside and let that dry. One thing I am going to do real fast since I am here is um, I am going to pull a little bit of that gesso out of here. And the reason for that is um, structural integrity, right? And we can pull a little bit more of it back in so there's not a heavy line, but uh, just trying to avoid having a thick ridge in there. Okay. That's how we do the mirrored image pull. All right, we'll come back. So just a quick recap where we're at before I go on to the clear gesso. Um, I had those two pages that I did here. I'm putting a sploosh, big sploosh full of gesso and then I pulled those pages apart. I skipped two pages and then I did black on the other side. So this is going to make a very cool base for something interesting that we will make coming up. So I'm excited about that. That is a lovely base protective layer, which is what gesso is all about. It's all about the base, guys. Remember, you know, we're building, building, building. Now, I think that the um, transfer sheet almost worked. Uh, I think I have to put more gesso down here on the base. Um, and then this guy is still uh, drying. But uh, I think I think this guy is going to be pretty successful. Now this was out of a book, so maybe that particular book um, that might work better. I just need to work it a bit. I think he's super fun. Um, <laughs> he's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens as I work with this a little bit more. He's cool. Okay. So I got this page prepped real quick. I did just use one, you know, this is that French to English dictionary. Um, so I just used that one book. You then you think, oh my gosh, what did you just do that one book for? Well, because I like it. I like it. And I think it looks good and it's my universe and that's what I'm doing. All right, so I got this transfer to work. This one single solitary transfer. So now I want to see if I can do it again. But I wanted to have a base on here before I 
tried it in my book. I know, I'm just going ahead and trying it in the book, even though I've only had one that works. Kind of crazy. Uh, you know, I'm confident that I can remove it if I need to, right? Trying to get an even layer here. I think the last time it got too dry, so we're gonna try it this way. There, maybe that way we can get it even. Thick enough. Here's the image. One of my ravens. I'm pushing the excess out, but not to. Uh, Trying not to remove all of it. All right, guys. Well, we just saw the quick demo. Let's talk real fast about all of the things that you can do with gesso. Um, so, from uh, a channel called She Touched. This is Art Journal Gesso Techniques. And I did a lot of research on this because I want to make sure that I'm providing you with correct information and with as mm, extensive of information as I possibly can. And I learned something in the process and that's cool. That's cool. Um, so things that she says you can do. Um, you can stiffen your paper with a credit card. You also can protect your paper. So we know that those things are automatic. Um, she says you can use it as a glue. I don't like to use white gesso, but clear gesso I would use as a glue. Uh, you can highlight a word by finger painting. Absolutely. Do a little circle with it. You can also, you know, smudge your thumb through it and you create a writing surface. You can conceal boo-boos, which you saw me when I redid the Oz page. I covered it with gesso and started over. Um, you can prevent bleed, you can stencil to add texture, you can use it as a resist. So if you put stencil down and then you put, uh, you know, with your gesso, then you go through and do your mediums, you can actually take a, a baby wipe and wipe it off and it will come back to that white and give you a great resist uh, technique. You can stamp in it, you can stamp with it. So you can put a brayer over your stamp and you can stamp your pages with gesso. Um, you can use gesso as an image transfer. Hello. Yes, we will be practicing this technique more often. Um, we will, you can use it with distress oxides. That's cool. That's really cool because um, you know it's gonna give us a better surface to work on. Um, you can put gesso in the squeeze bottle for a faster application. And then in another video, there was a fellow that I was watching where he was embedding tissue paper or deli sheet into the surface of the gesso onto canvas, creating some really neat texture, which is essentially what I did with this guy, except I did that with Mod Podge instead of gesso. He could have used gesso. So, uh, she touched is the person who gave a really clear, comprehensive uh, gesso overview. And then as far as the clear gesso, oh my goodness, this was from Pink Poodle Crafts. And the Pink Poodle Crafts video is saved under my um, playlist that's called Very Cool Video Techniques. It's where I'm getting some of my inspiration from. I'm trying to um, share with you some of the other artists that have been on YouTube for years and years and years, all right? None of this stuff is brand new, guys. It just really isn't. Um, but it, hopefully I'm presenting it to you in a new and interesting, <gasps> exciting way. Yeah, right, okay. So anyway, look at that party that happened down there. That's a party. This surface feels really fragile. This surface is really nice. You know, it's... Um, this side by side again was Pink Poodle Crafts. Uh, she really talks about clear gesso, and uh, I found it very interesting. It's under very cool video techniques. All right, let's just review some of the things that I did really fast with gesso. So I experimented with the transfer. Cool stuff. 
This was clear gesso, just kind of glopped on. Um, there was a little bit of baby powder extra in that gesso. I was playing around with it. And then it was stamped with cardboard. This is a gesso that's been pulled apart. Then I started playing with black gesso and uh, some stencils. I mean, look at how cool those are. Yes, I made a few of those because I love those. These will be future tags, future picolarte. I made quite a few of these because I have some steampunk ideas coming through my brain. Then I started to combine white and black gesso. Well, this background, this white gesso was way too bumpy. So this was kind of a failed attempt of putting that black gesso over the white gesso. But on a smoother texture, okay, so this one actually was uh, with black gesso stamped in cardboard uh, over white gesso. Pretty cool. Uh, this one was just playing with a brick stencil over some white gesso stencil. Um, I mean, those are cool. That is absolutely usable for something. I mean, and then I started to play with some colored uh, cardstock and with black and white together. How fun is that? It was a really great experiment for me. Thank you so much for joining me here, guys, today. Uh, talking about just so to protect and serve, and really, it truly does. It's an amazing product. Everybody should have it in their toolbox, okay? So I did go through and prep quite a few pages. Um, and the reason why I am prepping so many pages is simply because um, we're gonna be working on construction coming up. So you will have a very, you'll know how I've done this. These are with Citrusolve pages, which is National Geographic. They're very, uh, and, and a degreaser. They're very slick surfaces. So now that I have covered them with the clear gesso, they should be ready to rock and roll. How cool, how cool is that? So we have our Mod Podge and we have you know, our ephemera put down with the Mod Podge and then gesso over the top. Again, real quick, this page is just white gesso where I've taken it and shroop, opened it up. Black gesso where I have taken it and opened it up. So these will be really cool, fun projects. I have blank pages in between for future construction videos. We'll go into that though as we're making the stuff. Thanks so much for being here. Love you guys and we will chat soon. Oh, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share, pretty please. I love your comments. Let me know if there's something you wanna know more about. I appreciate if you use the Amazon links below. I take a lot of time to put those together for you. Everything should be updated. Um, so thanks, love you.